and we've been talking about the um, gun pro gun rights integrity rally march. on Parliament Hill. Pardon me. It was an integrity march. Sorry, an integrity march, and uh, and the fact that she had been swarmed by counter protesters or really okay. Let's let's not even glorify them to that discre- to that degree. Thugs. We're talking about you know teenage or young young thugs. That's right. I mean, th- there were no. I, I I didn't see in the video anyone that I would say was you know mature, oh. middle aged, no, older. No, they were. Just to kids me, who they, probably yes, have no They experience. all looked very young. Just, yes. They, they see something on TV and they just want to join in. Yes. That's basically it. But Stephanie, now let's shift gears away from that for a minute. You were talking, you're, you're involved with a, a veterans group. Yes. Um, and so why don't you tell us a little bit about that and, and, and what they're, see, Nick is looking at me because he's going, you're hijacking my interview. No, I'm not. They say, hey, I am not the only interviewee in the interviewer. Interviewer. In interviewer. That's right. Anyway, so, so you go right uh, ahead. Why don't you talk, talk talk to us a little bit about what uh, what this group is? Who are they? What you're doing, uh, yep. etc. Yeah. So, um, one of the areas of my activism is veterans, and I um, I joke that they've stolen my heart. Uh, I feel that they are misunderstood very much, and they. Obviously, a progressive government very much is hard on our military, our veterans, and their families. So I've entered this world of activism. I have not served myself. I don't pretend to understand everything. Um, I am just uh, very thankful they've let me into their community One of the organizations that has allowed me to help out, I made an application to CAV, C-A-V, Canadian Aboriginal Veterans and Serving Members. I applied as an associate. I'm not an Aboriginal, but this organization, I um, really enjoy helping out in the nation's capital the president, Richard Blackwolf, he will hold um, friend, a dinner with friends, uh, usually around the uh, 11th of November, so th- our Remembrance Day, and it's a very special time. They have the older veterans, and he will have a lovely dinner, some of the traditional older songs, Uh, There will be different dignitaries, for example, the the U.S. um, ambassador, what was the word again, Nick? Military attaches. Military attaches. They will come in full officer uniform, and it's just a lovely time of coming together and sharing some of their stories and it's it's very special. I wish that all Canadians could experience that. And then I've been involved with wreath laying at different um, things like the Tulip Festival. Again, a very special, very special time. Um, the stories are just incredible. So I love hearing the. Um, the different military stories. It just warms your heart. And one aspect, um, it's sad, like each year Richard will say, oh, that that guy, you know, he passed away. And that that's really sad to see that. But it's like they have a spark in their eye, like a sparkle for life, these veterans who've been through quite a bit. And I just always notice that that joy that you know there's no other way to describe it that spark in their eye they're just so incredible I was able I can't right off the top of my head remember her name but she at 13 years of age led the resistance in Poland against the Nazis and she's this little teeny tiny woman like me and it was just so special to meet her and her daughter was with her 13 yeah at 13 you can look her up so anyhow you know it it's incredible to be around these people 
and to look into their eyes and hear the stories and the the older songs and they they are just so full of joy joy for life and it's just a well, very they know, they know how precious it is yes exactly they do they really do because i think a lot of times uh in north america especially uh, because we've never really had a uh a war like world war one or two yes here in north america there yes. was the american uh family family feud Yes. And we had the War of 1812 and the Fenian Raids and things like that. There's smaller conflicts by comparison. Yes. Um, we don't realize just how fragile freedom is and just how how quickly life can be snatched away. I mean, in in one sense, we do in the fact that people have, you know, go through accidents and lose, lose loved ones, you know, like that, they're gone. But when you're uh, moving through a town and all of a sudden three out of your four buddies are dead, and you're the only one left alive, you know, and you're the one to come back and tell the story. You appreciate how quickly that can be snatched away. So they they yes. have this sense of, uh, you know, enjoying every moment because they never know how long they have. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, with now with younger ones who've been in Iraq, been in Afghanistan, it... Um, like I can see the sadness in their faces. Uh, I've also just, um, you know, posted on social media, tried to make posts. This doesn't have anything to do with CAB, but I'm just saying that I also support younger ones and the different fundraisers and awareness campaigns for PTSD and mental illness and all that. But returning back to CAB, they do have an excellent page of history, all kinds of resources. They have listed an excellent website to go and visit. So now they they had, they're obviously centered here in Ottawa. Are no, they? no. the The president he is out in British Columbia. Oh, okay, because that's where I was going. Are they a nationwide? Yes. Or is, okay, so yes. And these are not just. They include not just Aboriginal. Uh, veterans, yes, which for a long time did not get the credit they're due. Like I'm thinking of people like Tony Prince, yes, uh, our most decorated Aboriginal soldier. Uh, you know the, the stories I could tell you about him would just blow your mind, and maybe you've already heard them. But anyway, there's there's a lot of he he isn't the only one by any stretch, and I think that uh, it's been too long. It's like the Merchant Marine, right? Yes. How many times? How many stories do they have that we'll never hear? Yes. Because we were so caught up in celebrating the military, which is great, but they weren't the only ones at the party. Yes. So. Yes. And there, there's also that aspect that I feel and why I would be associated with CAB is I think we are losing something very precious as these people do, you know, pass away. Mm. And I, it just seems to me we're losing the history we're losing the stories we're running out of time of of l listening to their stories and they're just so incredible of human integrity and the values they had and the sacrifices they made and i think that we have so much to gain you learning from history and all the things that they did and it is you know it's it's very sad that we are losing some of those. Well, if the average uh, World War II vet is now in his mid nineties, within yeah. ten years they'll be all gone. Yes, I mean, yeah. go ahead. Keep well, I was just going to say we've talked about this before a little bit too, and that is that you know, for those of us in our generation who were born in the immediate aftermath of the war, and uh, I know again, Nick, you and I served, and and and. Everything that we did was related to the Second World War and right. the aftermath of the Second World War. So for us, even though we weren't born and we weren't living during the war years, um, it was a very real thing to us. Our parents had experienced it, yep. um, uh, and and we were living and and working within the context of of, of that war. But for for subsequent generations. It's just as much ancient history as the Battle of Agincourt. 
it's it's they they don't have the same uh, connection, sense of closeness, etc. So well, once it passes from living history, right. from living memory, like <clears throat> when you don't have any people, uh, we, they went through this in the 1950s with the Civil War in the United States. The last veteran of the Civil War died, and that physical link right. between that conflict and modernity was broken. And the same thing happened in World War One when we lost the last veteran veteran there. It goes from living memory to historical works. I won't call it fiction, but you know now it's it's uh, a course to study in in university or high school uh, or higher education. But there's no uh, there's no emotional bond bond to it anymore, and, and that's it, what we're going to lose. And you know what's really interesting is just as we're all speaking here again. Um, and we're, we're referring back to the Second World War and Afghanistan and Iraq. It just occurs to me that, you know, once again, even those of us who have a keen interest in this subject neglect to mention the Korean War. Yes. And, you know, and, and now, uh, actually, there was a very special uh, weekend for the Korean War that I did attend um, representing Cav, and it was it was very lovely. It was it's, very lovely. That that war they called the, one of the reasons why it doesn't get the recognition that it deserves is because it wasn't called a war. It was called a police action, a UN police action. And when a lot of those vets came home, because it wasn't a war, and a lot of the entrenched veteran organizations just didn't accept them because they hadn't fought a real war. And yet, when you look at the things that happened during that police action, the Battle of Cap Young, uh, you know, you can run down a whole list of things. Uh, they were under the same kind of stresses. They they faced a, a, a just as belligerent an enemy, if not a, a highly trained one, certainly one just as motivated. So That's you, right. You know, uh, at the Battle of Cap Young, they saved South. They they saved the city of Seoul. Yes, a Canadian, and they're very, very, very thankful. In it was Seoul. evident. Yeah, it was yeah. evident the ceremony uh, that they're <clears throat> very grateful to Canadians. As they, I was going to say, as they should be. But remember, we were part of a UN organization, and uh, we won't get into what I think of the UN, but. I, even under that guise, if you look at uh, the Balkans, when we were in the Balkans, um, you know, what Louis Mackenzie did uh, in Sarajevo and how he handled himself and the reputation he garnered and the, uh, uh, you know, the voice for Canada he, he was able to generate around the negotiations table when it came to si time to separating the belligerents. That's, uh, I think... A lot of those things have been forgotten because everybody does tend to focus on World War One and World War Two, and maybe Afghanistan, but they forget about all the other smaller conflicts or slightly just below conflict level, uh, or even just day to day service. Yes, and it takes a certain amount of courage just to volunteer to sign up for an organization in which part of the mandate is you could get killed. Well, you're writing a check. A blank check with your life. That's right. And, I, and you're I, handing it over to the and government. I, I also, you know, when pe oh, I'm just in the reserves. No, you shouldn't say that. Well, you know, I get you. You can be called in, like you can. You face the same risk yeah. as a regular force does when yeah. they when they ring that bell. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, we're coming to the top of the hour, and uh, our guest has been uh, Stephanie McAvoy. Uh, very interesting. Uh, topics, uh, Stephanie. We appreciate you coming in and spending time with us and with Thank our you listeners, for having me. Our global listeners, not just our Canadian listeners. Yes, that's and, right. That's for right. all of you in Liechtenstein, thanks for listening. Liechtenstein. That was the other country. See, right? I knew I it. I knew there was an L. That was an L. Yeah. Anyway, for those of you listening live, uh, we're going to take a break. We'll be back in a few minutes. And for those of you listening on the podcast, thank you for listening in, and uh, we'll catch you and part three on Monday morning. So, uh, and again, for those of you listening live, we'll be back in a few minutes here on the Nick and Joe show on thinkradio.ca.